good evening everyone at the outset let me express deepest of my gratitude to dr benjamin madam dr dharmati and the team pma me and dr benjamin madam go a uh, long way along madam has seen me as a student taught us the basics of nutrition as well as in me also as a faculty in the department of endocrinology at nair hospital it's a, it's a pleasure to be here amongst all of you and honor to be speaking for the bn bna my topic for today is osteoporosis in women and i will be discussing the medical perspective you all nutritionists obviously know the nutritional perspective and there is obviously a third perspective in this case and that is about physical activity or rehabilitation osteoporosis as we all know is an emerging problem when i joined endocrine everybody asked me why are you not taking cardiology you are getting cardiology it is the branch of the day i said let me put it straight i can see millions of diabetic patients in the country not being served also i see a bright future as an endocrinologist because there's a scarcity of specialists there if we want to choose something for next 10 years now that there are enough endocrinologists and diabetologists i think the branch for future is going to be geriatrics we have a lot of people in a geriatric age group who are capable mobile financially stable and looking for wellness also they are quite keen to see that they are active and do not get incapacitated <laughs> and that has resulted in a large chunk of population having osteoporosis needing the treatment and still deprived of same because the medical fraternity fails to cater for the need women essentially were thought of as vulnerable to osteoporosis because they get menopause post which the bone health declines and a fracture can exactly have a same impact on life like a heart attack or a stroke but i must tell you that men are also not spared of osteoporosis and most of the guidelines now recommend both women and men at certain age or with certain risk factors to be screened for osteoporosis now let us take a minute to understand what this osteoporosis is and the bone in a microscope looks like a sweater a sweater made up of calcium proteins and minerals which are woven together and a loss of the mineral is one aspect of osteoporosis the other aspect of osteoporosis is the deterioration of the architecture of the bone so that it becomes brittle i must tell you that there are close to 65 million diabetics and close to 50 million osteoporotics however most of the diabetics i must say a good number are diagnosed but most of the osteoporotics go undiagnosed and the reason is anybody wants to know whether i have diabetes or not check the blood glucose level the story ends there but anybody wants to know whether osteoporosis is there or not they have to go through a dexa scan a test which is may not be available at tier 2 tier 3 cities even in mumbai it is expensive and not universally available and this is what i was talking about a wonderful god's creation called as bones the main part of the human body gets slowly leached as a part of the aging process leaving behind a bone that lacks mineral and loses the architecture and that is how the osteoporotic bone looks like now what essentially causes this osteoporosis is aging 
are called as senile osteoporosis in women called as postmenopausal osteoporosis <coughs> however osteoporosis can also be secondary secondary to drugs like corticosteroids secondary to endocrine conditions like diabetes hyperthyroidism and cushing's secondary to rheumatological disorders secondary to liver and renal failure because they contribute to calcium deposition in the bone secondary to malignancies secondary to chronic debilitating problems and post transplantations the problem is big the problem is universal and 50% of women over 45 could actually be affected by osteoporosis 90% of them above 75 even eventually have osteoporosis and one third of them actually have vertebral fractures those chronic back aches which are never x-rayed or if they are x-rayed the fractures are not reported are actually vertebral fractures and six out of seven of these occur above the age of 65 years however the sad part of the story is that very few people across the globe are actually aware that osteoporosis is a problem and they need to be screened for that so even if all of you, my colleagues practicing nutrition can do this gratifying job of advising DEXA scan to any male or female above 65 years coming to you. I think that will be a great service and they will remember you for that. And let us try to look at these two simple scenarios. One of a 25 year old lady who, because the heel DEXA is being done free of cost by somebody in the apartment gets a BMD score of minus 2.5. She does not have a fracture and does not have symptoms. And let us look at a second lady who has been admitted with a fracture neck femur. She has been doing regular health checkups but has never been evaluated for osteoporosis. The bottom line is what do we infer from this? We infer that a young lady who never had a fracture does not need a screening. And the screening test is not the heel BMD because time and again you will find the heel and forearm BMD is being lower in Indian populations. And of these, the 70-year-old lady should actually have had got a bone density done. So let us look step by step for how to evaluate for osteoporosis and it has to be a clinical assessment how to convince someone walking into your own opd about them getting tested for osteoporosis then the test for osteoporosis that is bone density by dexa scan and then the laboratory assessment and then we'll look at the management but before that let us try to understand this concept called as peak bone mass the body continues to weave the sweater of bone, accumulating calcium, proteins, minerals, adding on to the bone continuously till 30 to 35 years of age, which is called as peak bone mass. So a 25 year old lady, if she's told that, okay, your bone density is less, she may not have achieved a peak bone mass. She may be achieving the peak bone mass. And she may not be the right candidate for testing unless she has a pathological fracture. Pathological fracture is a fracture that occurs after a fall that is less than one's own height. However, if she is tested, she should not have undergone a heel bone density because that is not the test for osteoporosis. And the law of nature is after the peak bone mass is achieved, the bones start getting leached. They get leached very fast in a female. You can see the rapid slope down and that's why osteoporosis is much more common in females post menopause because menopause rep represents the defining movement in bone loss. And then you look at other clinical features like kyphosis because of long vertebral fracture, a bulging tummy, somebody complaining of <laughs> hyperacidity, reflux or urinary incontinence. 
somebody walking through your OPD like this, somebody whom you feel that okay is just folding here or maybe keeping him, himself or herself a little awkward and the tummy is bulging. I think give it a thought. Remember that the spine is weak and that needs osteoporosis. Anyone whom you feel that the structure is weak, unstable, osteoporosis is on the guards. So all women above 65 and men above 70 need screening for osteoporosis. Also, those who are on secondary factors like vulnerable drugs, renal, hepatic diseases also need screening for osteoporosis. Those who are on steroids need screening for osteoporosis. And anybody with a fracture needs screening for osteoporosis. Those who are low in body weight can be screened as early as 45 to 50 years. And these form the indications for screening for osteoporosis. Many times you get an x-ray which says suggestive of osteoporosis. Just rubbish that x-ray because x-rays can never suggest osteoporosis because even exposure of the film change can look at osteoporosis. Those people walking in with a heel ultrasound tell them this is not the defining test. QCT and MRI are not readily available. What is gold standard for osteoporosis is DEXA scan. If you want to test for osteoporosis, advise your patient bone density by for bone density by DEXA scan, hip and spine. Do not look at the forearm bone density, look at the hip and spine. And this is the kind of a machine. It tests BMD in less than five minutes and a report is generated. The report shows a T score and a Z score. For all practical purposes, you need to look at the T score. The T score compares your patient with an index Caucasian woman of 20 to 29 years of age. Somebody who has just achieved peak bone mass is compared with somebody who is thought to be senile or frail and the index is of a Caucasian female and it is continued throughout different ages. Why not to compare with somebody of 75 years with a standard of 75? Because at 75 years, bones will be universally weak. So the benchmark is the strongest female who has just achieved peak bone mass. And then you compare how weak is the bone as compared to her and you get a standard deviation that is T-score for you. Ignore the Z-score because Z-score compares with age match and is used only in children and below 45 to 50 years of age. And you get a report. So your Z-score, as I was telling you, may not be as bad, but the T-score which compares with a healthy Caucasian female will tell you the correct osteoporosis. And here you can find, find the lumbar spine T-score minus 3.2 and a femur minus 2.6, both sides having osteoporosis. Remember the numbers. Minus 1 to 1 T-score is a normal T-score. Minus 1 to minus 2.5 is called as osteopenia. May or may not need treatment, but definitely needs nutritional advice and physiotherapy fall prevention measures. Anything below minus 2.5 needs treatment called as osteoporosis. <laughs> Normal is above minus 1. Osteopenia minus 1 to minus 2.5. Osteoporosis below minus 2.5. And if somebody has got a fracture, then that is a severe osteoporosis needs rapid aggressive treatment. Osteopenia needs clinical judgment and decision to treat. Now, when you get a bone density, also do this exercise for filling up a questionnaire called as FRAC score. FRAC score is available for Indians. You just need to enter whatever questions are asked and you get a risk of fracture. You can also get a risk of fracture if somebody does not have a bone density by looking at a term called as Q fracture. And the treatment is cost effective at 10 year hip fracture probability of 3% or any osteoporotic fracture probability of more than 20%. Now, the person has been diagnosed with osteoporosis. You have to investigate the patient. What will you do? The calcium, phosphorus, alkaline, phosphatase and creatinine are to be offered to all patients who are being considered for osteoporosis. 
विटामिन डी एंड पीपीएच लेवल यूरिनरी कैल्शियम एंड क्रियाटी मीन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट टू नो वेदर द डायटरी इनटेक ऑफ कैल्शियम इज एडिक्वेट यूरिन पी एच थाइड फंक्शन टेस्ट दो आर लीन एंड थीन गेट ग्लूटेन सेंसिटिविटी डन एंड मेन गोनाडल एक्सेस असेसमेंट फीमेल्स विल टेल यू वेदर दे the aim of the treatment is to improve the bone mineral density and the bone quality of the person but everything doesn't stop here we also have to make sure that we take measures to reduce fracture risk improve the quality and quantity of life of a particular person coming to you and the approach is that you have to reduce the bone leaching you saw that in females and in males the bones continue to be leached so medications act as a cement prevent the leaching some of them are called as anabolics they add to the bone and some maintain the existing bone but what will you advise to the person you will advise basic things like a b c d e f g h abstinence from alcohol and caffeine alcohol osteopenic people drink they zoom not the zoom platform and then fall down so it is equally important to have strong bones and equally important to prevent the fall and alcohol and drugs increase fall risk behavior change active lifestyle remember if the bone is guarded by strong muscles a little weak bone also can push a person through an active lifestyle calcium and vitamin d supplementation will quickly discuss this exercise fall prevention using a stick many times people come diabetic neuropathy parkinsons dementia and all of them shy from telling please use a stick they say that the doctor will make them look older and the doctor also feels reserved why should i advise the patient will leave me and there is something called as helophilia that's affinity for sunlight so these are the recommended daily allowances for calcium and all of you do a wonderful job by looking at how much calcium the person is having try to look at the urinary calcium creatinine ratio and if it is below 0.1 that means that the person's calcium intake is lower personally that person needs more calcium maybe the dietary calcium is not getting absorbed or the person is being treated so the needs are more and this is about various calcium tablets many people promote calcium citrate and lactate and all remember the most available calcium tablet is a calcium carbonate most economical is also calcium carbonate vitamin d please check vitamin d ask for 25 hydroxy vitamin d the normal level is 30 to 100 also make sure that you check calcium level many times you get a high calcium because of a malignancy or a hyperparathyroidism so when you treat osteoporosis it's important to check for calcium and vitamin d i told you about urine calcium urine creatinine sample and when you treat use simple cholecalciferol as treatment what does vitamin d do it enhances the absorption of dietary calcium in excess it doesn't promote bone formation it might be resorptive to the bone and what we see is vitamin d is given left right and center saying that it will improve your heart lungs and kidneys it doesn't happen it only helps the bone others are supportive uses vitamin d and calcium are the building blocks for the bone they have to be prescribed but remember that they are not the only treatment of osteoporosis they are the first line treatment after that is the osteoporosis therapeutics when you treat vitamin d deficiency avoid giving 60 lakh, 6 lakh unit injectable dose or 6 lakh unit oral dose give 60000 a week or 2000 to 4000 a day and remember that if you are dealing with an obese patient if you are dealing with somebody who is vulnerable to malabsorption or who is having interfering medications it's better to major vitamin d serially <laughs> continue giving weekly major every 8 weeks till the level is above 30 many a times companies promote calcitriol active costly vitamin d as active vitamin d remember cholecalciferol gives you a natural protection body activates it whenever it is needed so do not use calcitriol use simple vitamin d 
calcitriol is given in patients who have chronic kidney disease or hypoparathyroidism. Also, there is a lot of promotion of fancy calcium tablets like coral calcium. In fact, they may contain heavy metals like lead and do not use calcitriol containing calcium preparation. As far as possible, use calcium carbonate except for people who have renal stones where you can prefer calcium citrate malleate because it has a tendency to dissolve the stones. Also, stay away from the fancy calcium preparation. Doctor patients will ask whether my calcium tablet is good. Tell them to put the calcium tablet in a glass of lime juice. Calcium is a salt. It should dissolve in 30 minutes. Many people who are having heart disease say, doctor, don't give me calcium. My cardiologist doesn't want me to take calcium. Tell them it has been studied enough. Please take one tablet of calcium. We are not giving you two or three. Your cardiac risk may increase if the calcium intake is above 1700 milligrams a day, which is very rare. One tablet of calcium is needed. Normal calcium index and one calcium tablet should give you adequate calcium and prevent cardiac deposition. Now, let us talk about the therapies of osteoporosis and let me introduce you to them in the last part of this talk. And the therapies are broadly divided into two parts. Anti-resorptive, those that reduce the leaching of the bone and anabolic, those that help in forming the new bone. The most important treatment the most studied treatment and the most commonly used treatment is a medication called as bisphosphonate. What does it do? It acts like a cement on the bone. It prevents the bone from getting leached. Just remember some things about bisphosphonate. The oral bisphosphonate is alendronate. We give 70 milligram once a week with full glass water not to eat, drink or lie down for one hour after taking the tablet because there could be reflux esophagitis. So patient can sit, patient can walk, patient can do daily course, but not to lie down for one hour after taking the tablet. <laughs> there is an injection called as Zolendronate, which can be given once a year. And there is an injection called as Zolendronate, given once in six months. And then there is estrogen. Now, bisphosphonates reduce the bone resorption. I told you how to give orally once a week full glass water, not to lie down or eat, drink anything. But remember to check the person's teeth. Osteonecrosis of the jaw is a complication of bisphosphonate use. Sometimes patients have atypical fractures which are rare and it can cause reflux esophagitis. So these are the ill effects of bisphosphonates. But there is very good thing about them that you give them for three to five years and next two to three years, you may just skip them. That's called as drug holiday because they stay in the bone. They are like Rahul Dravid. They stay, they do their work, they persist and are effective. As I told you that after four or five years of usage, you may have to give them a discontinuation, a break called as drug holiday. And if anybody has a poor dental hygiene, avoid them. If anybody comes with a thigh pain, please avoid them because these can be a harbinger of a, a typical fracture. There has been a lot of use of something called a selective estrogen receptor modulators like tamoxifen, raloxifen. They're particularly used in breast cancer patients as bone-friendly therapies but they improve your bone density in a limited manner. Estrogen or what we popularly call as hormone replacement therapy. Many females take HRT now that it is safe for 10 years post menopause, but for osteoporosis treatment, it should be only offered till 45 to 50 years, particularly those who have had menopause and be given with the smallest dose of the estrogen because they have a possible risk of thromboembolism and genital malignancies. Anybody who can come later with a breast or uterine malignancy can say that you gave me HRT, that's why this problem came. So you have to be a little careful. Now, this molecule forms one of the most commonly used treatments for osteoporosis. It is called as denosumab. Denosumab 
is an antagonist of a rank ligand and so it reduces the maturation of bone leaching cells called as osteoclasts it's very safe 60 milligram subcutaneously given every six months it remarkably improves the bone density much better than what the bisphosphonates will do it does not need any drug holiday and it has minimum side effects however there is a problem with denosumab the moment its six months are over the effect is gone <laughs> by seven eight months the bones start getting leached again the bones start getting reabsorbed again. So you have to immediately consider giving certain therapies like bisphosphonates if you are going to stop denosumab. Estrogen, as I told, has not found favor. Tronchium was promoted particularly in some European countries again went out of favor. And calcitonin, calcitonin nasal sprays we give, we give in patients with vertebral fracture to get pain relief, but it is develops something called as tachyphylaxis. So it doesn't improve the bone density beyond first few days of use. Now comes to an, something called as anabolic therapy or something that forms the bone. Anabolics are like Virendra Saivar. They rapidly improve the bone density and reduce the risk of fracture. So any person who has got a fracture should receive anabolic therapy. Because after one year of bisphosphonate, one year of denosumab and one year of teriparatide, the anabolic therapy is called as teriparatide. It's a bone forming molecule, an analog of a hormone called as parathyroid hormone. And it forms the bone. And after one year of therapy, somebody is given bisphosphonate, somebody is given denosumab, somebody is given teriparatide the fracture risk is reduced to maximum by teriparatide. Bone density also works best with teriparatide. It's given as a daily subcutaneous injection like insulin. It cannot be given more than two years because of a questionable association of long therapy with cancer. And it does improve the bone quality, which is not improved by bisphosphonates to that extent. It has to be given as a first line therapy in somebody who has got a fracture before anti-resorptive because if you give teriparatide and then give anti-resorptive there is bone that is formed which doesn't get leached but if you give a bisphosphonate first and then think of teriparatide then bisphosphonates have slowed down the bone so they also slow down the bone formation and the effect of teriparatide is blunted to cut the long story short, anybody with severe osteoporosis has to receive teriparatide first. Anybody with a fracture has to receive teriparatide first. And combining the two doesn't work because bisphosphonates blunt the effect of teriparatide. There is something that will be soon available in India called as Romosozumab. It's a monoclonal anti-sclerostin antibody. It is given 200 mg once a month for 12 months. It has both anabolic and anti-resorptive actions. And it is also thought that it could be a game changer, but it came with a black box warning of increased risk of coronary syndromes and deaths. So those vulnerable should not be given. <laughs> when should you use an anabolic therapy? Anabolic therapy is costly, injectable and given daily teriparatide. When the bone density is very low and when the fracture risk is very high, that are the indications for anabolic therapy. Anabolic therapies improve the BMD much better than anti-resorptives. And when you want to use it sequentially, it has to be anabolic first. Anti-resorptive followed by anabolic doesn't work that well. And do remember, even if you don't remember the high five steps, calcium and vitamin D has to be given properly to all. You have to have a patient-centered approach. You have to sensitize all who need. Those who have symptoms has to be emphasized that they have to get their screening for osteoporosis done. And you have to also ensure that they are treated the right way. And also in 
encourage the patient to know the effects, side effects and the costs involved in the treatment. So this is what I was talking about. Those at low risk of fracture from the lower part of the iceberg, those who have a fracture are actually tip of the iceberg. And even if we as a medical fraternity, I'm not even saying doctors, endocrinologists, orthopedicians, we together make sure that anyone who has a fracture is asked for a DEXA and given a treatment that also makes the world a better place to live in, more stronger place to live in. And in the end, remember, the most costly medication may not be afforded by the most deserved patient. But that doesn't mean that a deserving patient should not be treated. I think Benjamin Madam will agree that we used to have glybenclamide, which even the sulfonylureas companies now bash that glybenclamide is not a good medication. We used to have insulitard. Nutritionists in private practice may never have seen insulitard. But I think we together, nutritionists, endocrinologists, did a good work. I must say, our patients in Nair had a same HbA1c and same mortality and morbidity as compared to our private practice patients. So even the available medications, even if they're economical, like bisphosphonates are very economical, 1,200 rupees, once a year shot of Zoledronate and the person is done. Important is to pick up and give care to the desert patients. Obviously, those who afford can get better care, can get better molecules. But what is important in osteoporosis care is to identify and treat the desert patients. To summarize, osteoporosis is an important public health problem which is still neglected. It is important to extend and ensure the screening of the needy and treatment options are beyond calcium and vitamin D and are effective and beyond treatment, it is the need that even fall prevention, physiotherapy, correct nutrition, high protein diet, fracture support measures are, are counseled and addressed to all, all the patients. These are just simple tests to know that if a person is made to lean to the wall and can't lean straight, that indicates that a person has osteoporosis, something that you can use in your clinic. Remember this at the end of your talk. And it's an important public health problem that we discussed. All of you, I am sure, will join hands in taking better care of osteoporosis. I have been taking care of osteoporosis and those who are not will start from today. I again extend my deepest gratitudes to Benjamin Madam for allowing me to be here amongst all of you, even though virtually. And thank you one and all for your patient listening. Thank you once again.